when we got to meet with some first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, you sent them out to watch our videos. Yes. They met with a lender, right? That's very, very exciting. Rude. And they were all hot and bothered, ready to become future Tacomans. Yep, which absolutely. was pretty great. Very exciting. Remember the Ten Commandments. Maybe we didn't discuss absolutely everything. So we should probably talk to the people about the Ten Commandments of buying a house. Thou shalt not change jobs, become self-employed, or quit your job. Yeah, I mean, you would That's think um, people would know don't quit your job while you're buying a house, but... But maybe sometimes it's not so obvious. It's not quitting, sure. right? Like like cha changing, people think I'm going to change I've got money jobs. in the bank. There's no rush. It's no big deal. But what if you change jobs into a different industry? Yeah. That, you know, those interruptions in your work history, what they're looking for are consistent, uh, consistent work history and employment verification. For self-employment, they want you to be doing the same kind of work self-employed for at least two years. So if you were um, working at Starbucks, but then you started your cat sitting business, you need to be a cat sitter for two years before you can use that as income to buy a home. Okay. Thou shalt not buy a car, truck, or van, or you may be living in it. Yeah. So that's a big one, right? It's, a, it's so huge. In fact, I would say don't buy, I mean, if you can avoid buying a car a year before you buy a house, six months before you, wait to buy your car until after you buy your house. And at least, I mean, take the time, talk to your lender. You went yeah. in, you got pre-approved, you started the process. If you need to make a purchase like that, ask. But I'm amazed at how many people, I, I didn't think that houses and cars went hand in hand, and yet this is a common enough one that people need to be reminded. There is nothing that will strike fear into your realtor's heart, oh. like meeting you and seeing you pull up <laughs> in car. a shiny, beautiful new car. Right before closing. Right before closing. Oh, God. Was that a present? <laughs> Thou shalt not use credit cards or let current accounts fall behind. That is a big one. Uh, and probably the most common, right? Yeah. Like suddenly, and you think it's all good. You've already got the Macy's card and you suddenly charge to it. You know, this, the, the one that I heard was, um, it, it wasn't intuitive. They didn't think, oh, this is a credit card. But two days before closing, they went out and bought $10,000 worth of furniture at 0% interest for their brand new house. and. You know, the underwriter, right before they wanted to sign, pulled credit one last time. Or no, they'd signed. The underwriter pulled one last time just to make sure everything was kosher. And it turns out and they no a, longer qualified for their house. And it's a totally house. logical thing to do. Like, yeah. we understand. You're excited. You want to buy furniture. Mm -hmm. That seems like the next thing to do. You're moving in this weekend. Just wait a little longer. Yeah. No changes to your credit while you're, no big purchases while you're buying a house. Thou shalt not spend money you have set aside for closing. Oh, you know what it says in the in the contract? What does it say? Sometimes, sometimes you guys won't know because you won't read it. No. But uh, when you, if you actually look at your contract, it says that you have the money set aside for closing when you write the offer. It's a part of your finance contingency. And uh, if you violate that, your earnest money could be in jeopardy. What if you're just going to Mexico real quick? <laughs> Maybe it's not time to buy a house. The, the, the down payment money is sacred. Set it aside, have yep. it ready. Don't borrow from it in the 30 or 45 days leading up to closing. It's important. Thou shalt not omit debts or liabilities in your loan application. I think we covered this one in uh, 2008 to 2007, <laughs> but it probably needs to be restated as many times as possible. Yeah, you know, if you um, have another house or have you know, a loan on an RV or a boat, or you co sign on your kids' college loans, or, or it's gonna be on your credit report. The yeah. lender's gonna find it eventually. So, probably the message here is get organized before you make your loan application, get everything. Maybe you genuinely forgot about that student loan. So, get it all laid out on paper and then be honest with your lender and disclose everything. It just makes everything go smoother and prevents any last minute problems. Yep. Thou shalt not buy furniture. We kind of already talked about that. Don't buy furniture. Don't buy, what else could you buy? Don't buy a boat. Well, you know, furniture, <laughs> things that the most common, couches, mattresses, TVs. Oh, I mean, TVs, yeah. It's the, true. That people think are fairly small, but apparently necessary items to have the weekend you move in. 
you're going to live there for hopefully five to seven years. There will be another sale at Best Buy in one of the upcoming weekends. You can wait until after closing. And it's, it's, it's tricky because like your nesting right. instincts are activated. Like you write that off on the house, the inspection goes well, you know, there's not much to do while you wait for it to close and you just want to buy stuff that's going to make it awesome. Home Depot, you just want to go buy stuff and you can't just wait, wait till closing. Yeah. Wait till those keys are in your hand. Absolutely. Thou shalt not originate any inquiries into your credit. Mm, along those same lines, when you go, don't open new accounts. So even if you're anticipating that you're going to buy these things after closing, mm -hmm. don't suddenly go and open a card two weeks before. Yeah, you're at TJ Maxx and they're like, you can get 10% off. Say no. Just say no. Say no to everything until you close on your house. Thou shalt not make large bank deposits without talking to me first. It just makes you look like a drug dealer. <laughs> Depending on what you're going for. Uh, more importantly, it could interfere with your loan. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, all the deposits have to be documented now. I have been at the grocery store branch of the bank, which is the only one that's still open on Friday with my client, with the bank manager stamping $1.60 deposits, $20,000, like explaining notes yep. so we can close on their house and they can buy their house. Crazy deposits? No, no. They have to source your funds. Just think of it that way. They have to source your funds. Thou shalt not change bank accounts. Mm, you know what? That's not a real common one that we no, talk about. I haven't a lot. run into that. But I mean, I, you know, this is actually um, a lender and an agent that I know's list. <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're trying to think of like everything that could possibly stop your deal. And I would think if you, you know, have been with your bank and had all your money in three accounts for 10 years, and then in the process of buying your home, you get frustrated, switch over to a credit union and move all your money, yeah. that's a red flag for the lender. Thou shalt not co sign a loan for anyone. Okay, co-signing is a term I never understood before I got into housing. Yeah. I always thought it was like, hey, my friend Ann here is cool. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you she's all right, so you'll give her a loan. That's not what it is. Just when you think co-signing, think getting a loan. I mean, don't make us go it's, all Susie Orman on you about this. It's part of your loan, so don't yeah. do it. You're, you're, getting, you're taking out a loan. You should, I, I can think of very few circumstances where now we're getting judgy, where one should be co-signing. But definitely don't co-sign during the home loan process because that that's, shows up on your credit report as yours. You're looking for anything that's going to cause a disruption to your credit report, to your uh, bank account balance. You know, just be really mindful. It's only 30, maybe 45 days between contract and closing. It's an eternity. Okay. <laughs>